Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome back to Chessable Masters 2020. I know, I know I didn't record yesterday anything. I had the reason. I had a small surgery. However, uh, nothing very serious. Uh, I had the day off. I should have two more days off, but we have the semi-finals of Chessable Masters 2020, very important games and also grand final is coming. So uh, I just wanted to make the, the short report of what happened in the games and show you one of the games. So uh, Magnus Carlsen uh, and Dink Liren. So uh, this was the position from the game one where Magnus Carlsen created the passed pawn. Uh, Dink Liren of course will um, exchange the, the rook for this pawn and then he will exchange the pawns. He will create his own passed pawn and Magnus will will be uh, forced actually to exchange the rook so it's completely drawish position however Ding Liren lost the connection and lost on time so that's the problem we know Ding Liren lives in China he has to connect through VPN so uh, he has sometimes the issues like that and, uh, and yeah, Magnus Carlsen won the first game and I would like to show you also the second game, what just happened here. So uh, Ding Liren opens with c4, then we had e6, g3 and now queen on g5 by Magnus Carlsen. Very interesting move. Bishop on g2 and now queen on d2. Can you imagine that? Uh, queen on d2 by Ding Liren and in this position Magnus Carlsen resigned. So huge respect for Magnus Carlsen. Uh, he was not happy about the style he won the first game. Uh, he said in the interview he has a huge respect for Ding Liren. The score should be half to half. However, it was impossible to do uh, because of the rules. So he decided to lose on purpose in the move number four. So we have a new world record uh, where world champion lose in four moves. So definitely uh, Magnus Carlsen has a new world record as well. So these were first two games and then uh, check this. So we had the two draws and then in the blitz games we had the draw and then Magnus Carlsen won as black so he won the first mini match and to qualify to the finals uh, he has to win two mini matches and as you see in the second mini match Magnus Carlsen won first game actually Ding Liren blundered the tactic and, and he just resigned then we had the draw and this is the game number three so if Ding Liren wants to you know uh, get to the third mini match he has to win at least one game and of course the best would be if he win two games uh, so this is last game where Ding Liren plays as white so without further ado let's see what happened on the board Ding Liren opens with c4 we have e5 so English opening uh, g3 and now knight on f6 of course is the most popular move knight on c6 is playable uh, c6 is playable d6 is playable and uh, other moves however However, Magnus goes for the quite rare d5. Uh, we have c takes on d5, queen takes on d5 and now knight on f3 as the rook is under attack and also a bishop on g2 is not possible. So a knight on f3 and now uh, if you think okay I can I can push the, the, the knight and then I can push and still attack the rook and that's a good plan. It's actually not because after e4 knight on c3 uh, the queen if want to defend the pawn there is only one way to do or maybe two ways uh, but let's say queen on c3 and now even e3 is possible so give this knight because there is a tactic pinning the 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 queen to the king and and win the game so b bishop on d7 would would have to be played the knight on d4 uh, let's say queen on g6 bishop on g2 and white has so beautiful development so this is one of the examples when to not push the pawn when it's possible in the center in the opening so uh, instead magnus plays knight on c6 we have knight on c3 attacking the the queen queen on d8 bishop on g2 knight on f6 and then castle 
Uh, we have h6 by Magnus Carlsen and now d3. So Dingliren plays white as, you know, as he played the Sicilian dragon with this formation uh, and with one extra tempo. So that's that's the idea of, of, of this opening. We have bishop on d6 now uh, and now a3. And we have a couple of games in the database. Uh, Castle was played in this position, castle and then b4 and followed by bishop on uh, b2. So uh, this was played already, for example, rook on e8 um, and the game could continue. However, after a3, Magnus Carlsen play a5. So he doesn't allow Ding Liren to play b4. Uh, instead, D Ding play b3. So now if a4, then b4 can be played, of course. Uh, and bishop on b2 is the plan. We have castle by Magnus, bishop on b2. B2 uh, and now rook on e8. Uh, rook on c1, developing the rooks, bishop on f5 uh, and now h3 by Ding Liren. So he wants to move the king to the safety, for example, king on um, h2 uh, and then in the future play, for example, f4 as this bishop would be very nice uh, defender of the position. We have queen on d7, so putting the pressure on h3. And now king on h2 defending. Uh, knight on d4 by Magnus Carlsen. And now what to do as white if you have to win this game? Uh, definitely exchanging the pieces uh, are not the best idea. So uh, knight on d4 could be of course played. But after e takes on d4 the pieces are, are exchanged. And then uh, this knight also have to be moved to the passive square a4 or even would be forced to exchange more pieces. So uh, definitely not the best idea for, you know, to play. Uh, queen on d4, yes, that's possible. And it looks like pretty dangerous stuff. Uh, but f5 solidifying the position, defending also at g7. Uh, and without the knights, the game is much simplified. The, the pawns are not symmetrical, but also very, very solid. Uh, two pawn islands each. For the player so definitely that's not the best idea for the player who has to win this is why we have knight on d2 opening the diagonal for the uh, for the light square bishop we have c6 defending that and now e3 kicking the the knight and here magnus carlsen if he has to play for the win probably he could go for some crazy things like bishop on d3 e takes on d4 e takes on d4 uh, and now this knight is under attack uh, the exchange uh, is also hanging here so white would have to probably go back with the with the knight and then black of course can take the the rook so be two pieces uh, for the rook down however have this central past pawn and it would be protected so uh that could be idea or play c5 immediately and after for example rook on e1 exchange the rooks and bring the rook to e2. So now white are up the piece. However, all these pieces are on the queen side. Uh, and black would have a very interesting attack here. Okay, all the pieces attacking here. Uh, and that would be pretty exciting. The engine suggests that black stands better here. Okay, so uh, white have extra piece, but it's not so easy. If Magnus Carlsen uh, have to win, probably he would go for some crazy lines like like this however we have knight on b5 asking to exchange the knights we have knight on b5 c takes on b5 and now a knight go back to f3 we have rook a on d8 by magnus carlsen and now the main problem in the in the sicilian defense as we know we have sicilian with opposite colors so uh, d4 when to play d4 on in sicilian d5 for example here that would be too early because after e4 knight on d2 it's very difficult to imagine white to win that game this bishop doesn't play this bishop doesn't play because of the pawn if the pawn is pushed then doesn't have the support uh, the position Position definitely is not uh, great however Ding Liren has a different idea and he starts with e4 very similar to the Sveshnikov uh, and now after bishop on e6 uh, he decided to take the pawn in the center and he create he wants to create this massive pawn center but 
it's all very very costly and Magnus Carlsen also goes for that actually he doesn't have much choice so we have bishop on e5 winning that pawn bishop on e5 uh, knight on e5 and now queen d6 attacking the knight and attacking also the pawn so uh, black gonna win back the pawn uh, we have f4 defending the knight and now queen on a3 and what to play now uh, as white white has to win probably white could try something like rook on c7 uh, and after bishop on b3 this pawn is uh, impossible to defend uh, play something like queen on d2 uh, and after let's say rook on c8 rook b7 rook c2 black would have also very active a uh, game queen on e3 queen a2 look at this this is pretty dangerous however rook g1 b4 uh, queen on a7 and it's so double edged position uh, if black gonna move these pieces you know bishop and the queen from this diagonal defending f7 that can be very very interesting very difficult these pawns gonna roll in the center as well but black have very nice counterplay on the queen side as well very sharp position that could happen however Ding Liren has a different idea here and he plays d4 uh, we have bishop on b3 queen on d3 as the queen is under attack and now queen on b4 uh, we have d5 by Ding Liren rook on c8 and this is very interesting move now by Magnus Carlsen so he pretends he want to exchange the the rook so a rook on c8 and after d6 uh, there is only one idea actually winning uh, giving the chances for black to win the game so Magnus Carlsen don't go for the draw now but he tries to play really the best uh, moves here now the idea is if you spot bishop on c4 it looks pretty nice but keep in mind that the knight is still on e5 so for example knight on c4 bishop on c4 uh, queen on d4 c3 let's say uh, queen d3 queen c4 exchange the queens uh, and now after e5 the position is very very interesting and also very sharp and it's very difficult to say uh, who's gonna be better here definitely knight on d7 is not the best idea here actually uh bishop can take on b7 but also can play rook on f3 and go after that pawn so uh rook e on c8 uh, and then rook on d3 and uh, this pawn is still under attack and cannot be actually defended so white would stand pretty great here and and would have a uh, good chances for the win and if black would try for example go to c5 then this pawn is not defended twice and uh, black would just lose this pawn so this is one of the idea here uh rook on c1 from the other hand after rook on c1 there is no threat anymore okay so uh simply rook on d8 d7 and we can have a very similar position to the to the what happened in the game however white still have uh, quite the chances with this pawn so black would have to be very very uh precise however uh magnus plays rook c on d8 so he retreat with the rook and now d7 doesn't work the same way and this is actually the moment where you should try to find the winning continuation for black because there is only one winning continuation uh, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So the only winning move for black is actually knight on d7 winning this extremely dangerous passed pawn and that's all that's all black gonna have uh, three connected passed pawns and win the game uh, if knight on d7 then bishop on c4 skewering the queen so if the queen still wants to stay uh, and keep an eye on d7 this is what ding and play queen on d1 the problem is queen can retreat to e7 and attack the knight 
and attack the knight. So uh, black gonna lose the knight and with three pawns, of course, this is winning uh, position for black. This is why Ding Liren resigned the game and we know the first finalist. So Magnus Carlsen, congratulations, he got into the final. Uh, there is only one question, what would happen if d7 is not played? Uh, but maybe, maybe Ding Liren plays something like rook on b1, uh, attacking this bishop. That could be very interesting because after a4, uh, white actually can sacrifice the knight on f7, okay? And this would be very interesting. So, uh, king on f7 and then e5, attacking this knight. And moving the knight is not the greatest idea, but if black want to do that, then for example, knight on d7, bishop d5 with check with the attack another attack on this on this bishop uh, and then after king on f8 of course uh, white is has a much better position with this central pawns and solid pawns so uh, that would be the idea but probably magnus would not go for the for the saving the knight as as white would have you know much worse pawn structure here and uh, less counterplay uh, he could go, for example, for queen on c4 uh, and after queen on f3. Uh, if he tried this time, uh, it's also very interesting. Knight on d7, uh, rook f on c1 first, uh, queen on e6 and now rook c7. White would have a lot of uh, counterplay here. Uh, so, for example, b6 and then rook on b3. This would be interesting, sacrifice the exchange uh, and if queen on b3, then queen c6 and this uh, knight gonna be lost anyway. So it's impossible to uh, to defend it. If queen goes back to e6, then we would have a very nice pin uh, winning the queen and the game. So uh, as you see, very double edged positions uh, and this is what Ding Liren could go uh, instead of his plan d7. So very very subtle trap by Magnus Carlsen, uh, Ding Liren played d7 and after knight d7, knight d7, bishop c4, uh, queen d1, queen e7, uh, Ding Liren had to resign the game because he just didn't have any counterplay, no pawn, he just lost this pawn uh, and black gonna win with the connected pass pawns. So, so that would happen to the game. And I also would like to show you the, the semi-finals so far. So here we go, Magnus Carlsen uh, is the first finalist and Jan Nepomniashi won his second mini-match against Anish Giri uh, and they have 1-1 uh, and today they gonna play uh, decisive mini match so Jan Nepomniashi or Anish Giri gonna be in the finals we will see uh, pretty soon so if you want to know I will also uh, cover um, their semi-final uh, if you don't want to miss it press subscribe smash the bell button thanks for watching and see you in the next one